What's up, brand builders? My name is Mash Ponigalo, and welcome to another episode of the Brand Builder Show. In today's episode, we will be talking about one of our clients, a uh, popular and very successful Indian fashion brand, and how we created that brand from scratch, including strategy, brand name, brand identity, website, e-commerce, and the whole nine yards. So let's jump in and analyze how this brand was created. And there will be a lot of takeaways from this um, in terms of how you can uh, apply certain of these principles to your own branding. So let me introduce to you Elegore. It's an Indian fashion brand. And uh, the tagline is Rising to Luxury. A premium Indian luxury fashion brand for whom we create an awesome brand name based on storytelling and positioning strategy. A stunning visual language in the form of an elegant and luxury logo design, secondary brand mark, an official brand pattern, uh, package design, and more. So, Allegory was born out of inspiration to create a luxury brand in the Indian fashion industry uh, for daily work life. The founders of Allegory got their inspiration from nature. They wanted to be a premium fashion brand incorporated in India and yet open for fashion-conscious consumers worldwide. Threads and needles are in their blood, and they have a lot of ideas for their brand allegory. The conception of allegory began in 2016. The vision behind creating the brand was to provide customized and luxurious apparel for customers and helping them stay with the trends. Okay, so that is the introduction of allegory. And this is, of course, the logo design that we created. Now, let's look at the challenge first. So when the co-founders of Elegore approached Spellbrand, uh, they wanted a full brand treatment. That meant we had to start with a positioning strategy that enabled the brand uh, to stand out from the competition. Uh, it had to look and feel luxurious and be able to play on the international arena. The founders were keen to launch their premium brand in the Indian market, but quickly take it to the US and EU markets. This meant that the brand had to work locally, but also make sense um, to an overseas audience. So we sort of started looking at several different uh, kind of strategy perspectives. First was, of course, the value proposition. Allegory uh, well, before the brand name, uh, we, we just called it X because, you know, we didn't come up with a brand name yet. The first part was coming up with a brand strategy, and then we would come up with a brand name. Um, it is okay sometimes to start with a brand name and then come up with a brand strategy, but if you have uh, the brand strategy nailed down first, then the brand name can be uh, sort of informed through the strategy that you've come up with, and it will be more aligned with your core values and, and things like that. But anyway, uh, getting back to allegory. So what we looked at were several different perspectives. Now, what is the value proposition of this brand? It is a fashion brand uh, in, incorporated in India, but it wants to play on an international arena. So how would this brand uh, differentiate itself? How can it uh, sort of uh, make a, an impact, not only locally, but overseas? When you're approaching the market, when you have value propositions that you need to put forward so that you can differentiate yourself in the market, there are three different types of value propositions. The first is when you have a, 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 a premium product, a, a differentiating product, a unique product. The second is when you are having an operational efficiency. So you're, you're producing your product or service in a much more efficient way. And therefore, you're having, um, you know, uh, you're able to offer that product or service at a lower price. And third is about customer kind of relationship-based kind of value proposition. So with this brand, we knew instinctively that it had to be the customer relationship kind of uh, angle or value proposition. Because going for a unique product would not work with this. Uh, it's it's a fashion brand, um, and and there would be the client would be producing uh, apparel that uh, 
might be different, but not unique. Um, they could not go for uh, operational efficiency because this is going to be a premium brand and a premium brand would need, uh, you know, a premium kind of uh, workflow, uh, materials, um, you know, the way they manufacture it. So they can't really just say that they're going to have operational efficiency and hence will offer the cheapest product. In fact, if they offer the cheapest product, then uh, the brand will lose out in, you know, on, on the international scale. So that left us with the customer relationship angle. Now, what does that mean? It means gaining mind share rather than trying to go for market share. Because when you go for mind share rather than the market share, market share will follow. My, gaining mind share is very difficult. Um, so we felt that gaining mind share was the best strategy for Allegory. Um, now, while I can't, we have an NDA and all that, so therefore I can't really discuss what strategy we actually came up with. For the purposes of this video, and if you're actually on the journey um, of building a brand, it suffices to know that you have to choose a good value proposition. You have to base it on the strengths of your brand, the nature of the industry, the landscape, and so on and so forth. So we came up with a robust and kick-ass kind of brand strategy. And we then moved on to the brand name development. So after we created the positioning strategy, we came up with a number of brand name suggestions, complete with etymology and brand stories. The secret to creating a brand name is to make sure that it's imbibed with meaning. Etymology. The founders fell in love with the name Allegory right off the bat. The etymology of the name is based on the Latin word ex. Uh, which means out of, from, combined with lego, which means choose, select, appoint. So the brand story uh, is that it's a beautiful and elegant brand name that suggests the, client, the client's customers choose the best from life and live life to the fullest. And the brand supports this aspiration. So you can see where our uh, positioning strategy was. It's about building an aspirational lifestyle brand rather than a simple fashion brand. Next, the name semantics. It was easy to pronounce. The word sounds like a regular word while being unique and brandable. A strong, powerful, simple, unique, and interesting brand name. And the best part, of course, was that, um, you know, the domain name was available, the social media handles, um, there was no trademark registered. So it was a perfect, brand name for Allegory. Once we nailed down the name and the client was happy with it, we went ahead and registered the name, uh, the domain, and, and you know, all that. Next, we created a stunning brand identity. And this visual language of the brand started with the primary brand mark, the logo design, the concept of rising above the ordinary or rising to luxury was taken as the base for the visual uh, identity development. After a lot of discovery, research, and brainstorming, we created a whole bunch of creative directions from which the client chose the icon of the Pegasus, which aptly represented the concept of rising or flying high above the ordinary. So you can see that the logo looks stunning. It's simple, it's elegant, it's powerful. We chose a, an awesome looking font uh, and of course customized this for this client. And the color choice, again, hints at luxury, taking to the next level, um, you know, going beyond is what we're trying to communicate with this logo design and the brand identity. Next, the secondary brand mark. We then extended the primary brand with a complementary secondary brand mark which could be used on signs, marketing material, digital assets such as apps, labels, and so on. Now, typically, a secondary brand, may, brand mark is effective when using the primary logo becomes uh, overkill or, or would saturate the brand identity. And as you can see here, the secondary brand mark is a, an emblematic brand mark. It's iconic, but it is still emblematic. And we've actually come up with two different versions, as you can see here. The first one has E in the center uh, and the tagline rising to luxury, uh, established 2016. 
And then we have a similar rendering, but with the primary icon within embedded within the secondary brand mark. And as you can see, it looks stunning. It, it just looks beautiful. Then of course, we moved on to creating the rest of the brand identity elements. And these included beautiful business cards. And you see two different versions of these business cards. Uh, the first one is a single color in terms of both the background and the foreground. And the second one is multicolored in the sense that we use a different co uh, uh, color for the, for, for, um, for the front of the card as opposed to the back. And you will notice that um, the brand identity uh, is really very much in play uh, on these business cards. First, you have, of course, the back of the card with the beautiful um, logo, the color, and then the front of the card, neatly laid out text, very elegant, very professional. And then in the background, you can see the outline of Pegasus, uh, like a watermark. And then the second version is a much simpler one. So this one, the first version would be used in situations where um, the client wants to really make an impression. So, uh, you know, these would be printed with the letterpress, uh, with a, you know, with the fine quality cardstock and all that. And then the second version is more for the casual usage. Um, this is for everyday usage of the business card. And um, so it's the layout of the front is much simpler. There's no watermark. Uh, there is the secondary icon just to kind of create that kind of brand touch point for this. Then you're looking at the envelope design and you will notice in the envelope design and which we also used in the business card is the brand kind of uh, official brand pattern. And I will talk about the brand pattern um, after we cover the stationary design. And it's very interesting because every brand needs to have a brand pattern. And I talked in depth about creating brand patterns in another video, which was called, I think, the, uh, the uh, importance of the brand identity system. Uh, and I recommend you check it out because it sort of puts all this into context. Um, so you can see here in the envelope, um, and, and a compliment, it can also be used as a compliment slip. The logo and the brand pattern used very effectively. Uh, of course, Pegasus is a uh, watermark is still there. And then you have on the right hand side here, the email signature, um, which is a beautiful looking email signature. I mean, that just, you know, it's, it's kick ass. And uh, it's got um, a professional kind of font treatment, beautiful layout, spacing. There's a, there's a subtle kind of brand pattern at the back. Uh, and then, of course, there's the logo on the right-hand side. Just stunning. Then on the left-hand side, you see is a letterhead. And again, similar to the envelope, it uses the kind of brand pattern. Uh, it uses uh, the Pegasus watermark. It's trying to keep it very consistent. And on the right-hand side, you see is a tag design. So we've created a ribbon kind of mark, and we put Pegasus or the icon inside it and uh, establish 2016. So it makes for a simple but very effective uh, tag mark or, or a tag, a clothing tag. Then you're looking at Facebook. Again, we're using the secondary brand mark um, as the avatar and the primary logo as the cover image. Just looks absolutely stunning. Okay, so we move on to the packaging design and the official branding. And we created an official kind of brand pattern that shows its effectiveness on the package tag design, and of course you saw in the stationery. Now the key to a brand identity is consistent implementation of brand elements with appropriate priority given to the primary design elements and the supporting ones. Now, for example, this is a beautiful, stunning looking package design. It's a limited edition box with a pullout tag. And you can, you can see that um, it's got a very subtle kind of background with mountains and stuff. It's got the primary logo right on the top. And then on the side, you can see the secondary brand mark. Now, this is another version of uh, uh, a package design with the brand pattern and the background, the icon, the logo icon looking powerful. And then of course, uh, a pullout kind of uh, 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 tag with the secondary icon on it. Next, we're looking at label designs, you know, tags, labels, Two different versions, um, one with a, a very striking kind of brand pattern on the right hand side, uh, another with uh, the tagline rising to luxury. Then we're looking at a few other brand implementations. So we've got 
On the left hand side, you see, uh, again, this is a carry off bag uh, when consumers come to the store and they, they, they shop and they, you know, this is the carry, carry bag. Beautiful, um, it's a embossed kind of uh, um, foil base. So there's gold foil em embedded into this. It just looks top class. And you know, somebody holding this bag, walking around a shopping mall, I mean, people are going to get attracted to this and say, you know, we need to go and visit the shop, this allegory. What is this? You know, it just looks stunning. And then, of course, there's tags again. We've got a T-shirt, a uh, business card. Again, another version of the bag. Uh, this is for a different kind of uh, implementation when people buy accessories and th uh, uh, stuff and all that. So as you can see, the brand implementation is just right bang on. And we at Spellbrand, you know, we took a lot of care to create this kind of premium and luxury branding for this client. And we actually specialize in this. We, we, we go beyond just what is required. We go beyond that. We try and come up with design solutions for our clients that are, that are actually, that, that take the client to the next level, that kind of gain mind share and of course market share. Um, so this is a stunning kind of brand identity implementation. Next, we moved to creating uh, a website for this client. So to match the premium positioning of the Elegoria brand, the client needed an elegant and high-end website that would cater to the right kind of target audience and deliver the right kind of impact. So we set about designing a website that was based on the principles of simplicity, on brand and high conversion based. Using the brand color palette judiciously and focusing on the beautiful model photos of products, the website looks simply gorgeous. And in fact, we sort of work with the client to pick and choose the best kind of photography, uh, the model and photography uh, art direction to sort of bring this website to life. And as you can see on the left hand side is the opening page. In fact, Let's actually go to the website. All right, so as we load up the page, you can see on the top, we got this nice, neat little layout of the logo, um, the, 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 the kind of menu system, the cart, the wish list, and search bar. And as you scroll down, and of course, sorry, the, um, because I'm recording this on, uh, on my laptop, it sort of looks, um, I have to scroll more, but on our desktop, this actually comes above the fold. And then we have the featured apparel. Beautiful looking product layout, very smooth, very simple. And then of course you have pricing. Uh, the discount is shown here, very effective um, because you know straight off the bat, people know what kind of discount they're getting. Then there's the new trends uh, is again, featured items, beautiful layout, simple, latest news. And then of course, a gorgeous looking footer. Okay, let's go to, let's go inside the shop now. So this is the shop. Again, as you can see, it's a very, very clean layout, very uh, judicious, very effective. Um, the product uh, on the model is front and foremost. There's no other distractions. Uh, beautiful. And there's, of course, for international audience. So right now you're looking at Indian rupees, but you can also look at um, the products in dollars. Uh, very convenient, very simple. Look at the implementation, beautiful. And of course, there's sodding and, you know, all that. Um, so as you scroll down, of course, there's pagination at other products. Um, let's just check out one product. Let's go to this product. As you can see, again, beautiful layout, simple, uh, with uh, related products. So you got the featured image here. And, um, you know, as the client clicks over this, they can see this. or the client can click on the photo itself and you get a, a larger version of the photos. Look at that, beautiful layout, beautiful implementation, nothing to distract, select um, the size, add to the basket, and you're looking at, you know, 19.5% off, add to the basket, and then you come to the cart, and look at that. If you point your mouse over this uh, this little icon, you can see, the cart, you can, you know, visit the cart or check out. And then very clean shopping cart. Next step is check out detail and then order complete. Um, you know, if they have a coupon, they can enter it here. 
and then of course, you know, proceed to checkout. So that's the website. And, um, um, you know, as you can see, it's a beautiful, beautiful looking website. It's got everything in it, but very, uh, it's, it's more conversion focused. It's not trying to be cheesy or cheap. It's looking very premium or luxurious. So that's the website. And I just wanted to, uh, you know, talk a little bit about the model photography and the art direction for this, for this client. So for their product and marketing photos, the client engaged supermodel Lini Johansson, who was Miss Global Sweden 2016, Miss Scandinavia at the top of the model of the world, Germany, Miss Nazareth, and darlings of the press at Miss Global 2016, Philippines, and walked the red carpet at Cannes Film Festival in May 2017 on behalf of Sweden. Now that is an impressive resume for this model. And you can see the result is a stunning, uh, stunning set of product photos that are world-class and they put the brand on the world stage. And you can see here, um, beautiful looking model, of course, and beautiful photography showing the products in the best light. And as I mentioned in one of my other videos, um, product photos are important. You need to invest in product photos. I mean, there's no other way to go about doing it. Your products will make or break your brand. And investing in product photos is money well spent. Look at this. This is the level you should try and achieve for your fashion brand. Okay, so that completes the analysis and review of this client. Um, I'll try and do once a week, uh, take one of my clients and try and analyze, maybe not this in depth, but nevertheless try and, you know, uh, you know, talk about some lessons that you could learn uh, from that particular branding. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you have any questions about this particular client or uh, our methodology, just give me a shout, uh, ping me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Bonigala or leave comments below this video and I will surely respond. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.